I like that. I feel like smoke and shit supposed to pop up right now. <laughs> As we arise out the ground. <laughs> yeah, bitches, we back. It's Monday. It's a real live show. It ain't a rerun. Why are you yelling? <laughs> too excited. He's fired up. I got shit to talk about. You ain't got yeah. shit like I got shit. No, I got shit to talk Your shit ain't better than my shit. Yeah, it is better. We gonna see. You gonna buy it. <laughs> anyway, it's the all new rollout show right here at Morris Media Studios Live. Uh, on the internet, dial at speedyandfriends.net. That's speedyandfriends.net. It is the funniest motherfucker you ever gonna meet in your life. Gotta meet more people. Speed dog and dog. I'm glad you think so, Speed. Turn your mic up. <laughs> you need to meet more people. I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Be in the mirror. You the funniest nigga you know. <laughs> hey, and then I put a mirror behind me. You too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who else in the building? Poetess. Hey. Nikki Pam. No Kente headband. from the yay. No headband. No, no headband. headband today. Silky. What the fuck? Silky. And today. that's her hair, ladies. Uh, yes. uh, oh, uh, 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 uh. Let me see. Let me see. Stop mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. <laughs> Ain't even no bumps back. No, no. I feel a crown royal. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to keep these days. Silky. Up. Yes, very much so. Uh-huh. What'd you yeah. iron it with? Iron it? Uh, iron? I did used to do that back in the day. You used to iron your hair? You take Me paper, too. you put your yeah. hair on the thing, you put paper over it. That was before the iron. flat irons. Yep. How was that before flat iron? Uh, was that 62? Uh, <laughs> was y'all niggas at the last supper? How old were you motherfuckers? <laughs> Look at this nigga. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ironing with an iron. Yeah. Yes, we did. You gotta stay on that mic. You can't hear shit you say. Okay. I know your titties anyway, but you know. They are. Let them be. Let them be. <laughs> and she got a 300s on today. She oh, got, yes, we got to get a picture of these and post it on the page. Nah, you she will got, not. She got you her spotters. The, the motherfuckers go past the calves. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> high got, tops. She got the knee highs on. <laughs> <laughs> high top. I have to remember to keep my legs closed because of speed. Yeah, that's what she said. Jeez. I know. He's in the kitchen. He said, Portis, watch this. Uh, you're just going to leave your legs open like that. <laughs> yeah, she was sitting like the one of the homies <laughs> with a skirt on. I was like, I'm uh, what's up, man? You know dudes. I'm going to get a good look and then tell you. Go, okay, I seen enough of the pussy. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to close your leg. Your spot is showing. Your spot is showing. Your 300, Your 300 is, showing. is showing. So what did you do this week in Speed Dog what? Dog? So I, gotta go, I had to go to Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Phoenix, Arizona, who came out. Uh, Stand Up Live Comedy Club downtown. Go support that club. It's a lot of uh, brothers and work there. Hot shit. So we're going we gonna to be going there. So I'll tell you about that later. Sure. So on the way... To the show, so the flight is an hour. Mm-hmm. The fleet, the fight, the, the, fleet. the, the, fleet. the fleet. flight is out. So guess who gets on the plane with me, leaving from Burbank? Uh, Magic Johnson. Hilarious. <laughs> that was random. I know. I just tried to reach one. Jojo. Jojo from who? Jojo from Jodeci. Oh, Jodeci. hilarious. Oh, damn. Jojo from Jodeci get on the plane. All right, now anybody know? To the show. So the flight is out. This nigga. Okay, I'm sorry. Every week. Every week I do the same thing. Fucking replay. I uh, don't so. Everybody know this is the little plane. It's the little skinny one. It's like you like the plane is low. Oh, like you can only take like the little skinny one. You like know, a not, Cessna or yeah. something. No, 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 not like no, that. Not, but it's not, the, skinny, not the good skinny. It's the tubular. Hey. Like a tube. Tubular. Yeah. So, so two so, seats, like yes, yeah, two seats, one two seat, seat, two seats, one seat, like uh, that all in the whole plane. Mm. So and it has one bathroom. Mm-hmm. Keep that in mind. One bathroom. Uh oh. So Jojo, we get take off. So Jojo go to the bathroom. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I want to hear the rest of it. So forty-five minutes later, we land. He come out the bathroom. No, he's still in the bathroom. What? what? But they cannot taxi to the to the thing until whoever's in the bathroom come out. <laughs> oh, so we're just sitting no. on the runway. We're sitting on the runway. And nobody knows why. It's like why are we fucking sitting on the runway? Don't the, tell the, me this. And, and my <laughs> man finally go. Uh, whoever in the bathroom, you have to come out because we can't taxi to the gate unless you're out of the bathroom. And he said, ooh, yeah. <laughs> so can't, JoJo's still in the fucking bathroom. So we sit there like another 10, 15 Mm-mm. minutes. And then they just said, it. fuck it. They park. As soon as they pull in and park, Police JoJo come. come out the bathroom like, hey, he did. everybody looking at him like, he said, hey, man, I had to use the bathroom. <laughs> So as we're walking off the plane, he walks back to go to it because he had to go get his bags and shit. I said, this got to be. And you know, white folks don't know right. who he is. They just know it's a nigga yeah, yeah. that been in and the bathroom. And they looking at you, looking at him. Like, yeah. can you get your cousin? And he says this to me like, we are bonding. <laughs> yeah. So he walks past me and goes, hey, man, I had to use the bathroom. Shit, I don't care. <laughs> I was like, uh... And nigga, when you... Nigga, it smelled like all of... It smelled like zoo dirt. 
it smelled like shit from his 1992 debut album. Oh, Ooh. Did you say zoo dirt? <laughs> zoo <laughs> dirt. I have oh, never. This shot fire on Because I'm like, because we was just sitting there. I'm like, who the fuck? Now I forgot he went to the bathroom. Right. I don't know it's him. And then they finally go, whoever in the bathroom, you got to come out. We can't come out. He come out with the Sunday paper. He came out. <laughs> I need to go. Yeah, how y'all do? <laughs> Don't go in there. Baby. I was like, Jojo, really? Look at this. And he going to bond with me and made it look like I know him. So white people looking at him like, gee whiz. <laughs> Did you invite him to the show? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Hell no. Cards. You had your card. I just looked at him like, really, nigga? That's <laughs> why well, it had to be you. Uh, and then he, as soon as he walked past, he was coming to me and said, Hey, man, I had to go to the bathroom. You was only two black people on the plane, too? No. That's why I don't know why he spoke to me. <laughs> you made eye contact. You, know, you can't make, you you can't make eye contact exactly. with a crackhead. But this nigga exactly. literally come, as soon as we taxi in and the, and the door come up, he came, he opened the bathroom like, What? <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you had us waiting. Niggas are trying to get off this tubular plane. I can't. <laughs> That's anyway. Nasty. So that's what happened. And uh, shout, again, shout out to, uh, if you live in Phoenix, go to Phoenix. Go to uh, the Stand Up Live Comedy Club. It is off the chain. Uh, we have four sold out shows, me and Ricky and a uh, young man, uh, 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 Clayton. forgot his name. Clayton, a comedian, a very funny comedian. He, uh, yeah, he opened. Uh, so, this, so this is how Rick do it, which was cool as fuck. I ain't have a problem with it. So the first show, Rick headlined it, mm-hmm. and, and I middled. So all the other shows, I headlined, mm-hmm. which I didn't care. I had a great time. Right. And Ricky hosted and he destroyed. I had a. Did you guys watch my uh, Periscope? Yeah, I, well, one of them didn't come out, but yeah. Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah, <laughs> my, my Wi-Fi wasn't working when you. Were <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Rick, and shout out to uh, Ricky Smiley because there's very few comedians when there are other funny comics on the show they don't get a chance to shine. They're yeah. like, hey, nigga, do ten. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Give him the light at three. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You don't even know he yeah. did that. So uh, we destroyed, peeled the paint off the fucking wall. So the owner wants us to come back. So we're gonna come back. He wants me to come back. All right. And shout out to all the fans who came out to the show. I sold out of shirts and hoodies in fucking Phoenix. Damn. Hoodies at that. Hoodies. Niggas said, what, what, give me that shit. I'm yeah. sure. Nigga, I was selling them at top dollar. <laughs> top really? dollar. Wouldn't give no discount. <laughs> they was buying. And a lot of fans, and I'm trying to remember all the names, came up and said Dante. they loved the show. Dante Jackson. Yeah, man. shout out to Dante. They love the show, and they, are, they get very upset when we don't do the show. Okay. Just pour it so you well, understand. Well, make a donation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tell them. Put some money on these books, player. <laughs> exactly. Put some coins in the can, player. <laughs> if you like the show exactly. and love the show, support so us. So we're, I mean, we're definitely going to go yeah. back to Phoenix, man. Are you going to cut me off while I'm trying to get up some money? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> He ain't got no he ain't got no fundraising etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> Go to contact at Morris Media Studios on PayPal. Carry on. <laughs> and uh so that that was my uh I'm sh- hot as hell though. I'm sure he gave you an earful. Who? Yeah, he told me a lot of things, a lot of interesting things, and we'll, we'll like talk we about that off air. We'll two talk about sides and the truth. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's their side, there's that side, side, and right in the middle is the, the truth. truth. I'm going to go with the one who still has a show side. Yeah, that's what I'm like, Yeah, Only I feel smart like yeah. Shots yeah. Fire. Smart I'm just saying. saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. But it was a great fucking weekend. Uh, I had a great, uh, I, I mean, I destroyed. I, I had to look at because mom was like, "Nigga, are you fuck with everybody yeah. else?" Did. Yeah. You yeah. destroyed. Me, I, looked at, me. I looked at me and said, "Nigga, who are you in the mirror?" <laughs> and I looked behind me and said, "Who this nigga behind me? He doing good too." Kiss your reflection. Yeah, oh, this nigga's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was some great show. But how did show. the other comedians? They was they were good. No, they were, they good. were good. Ricky I destroyed. destroyed. Ricky. What is three? Fucking. You guys or? Yeah, it was just three. Okay, but, you. But the thing about Ricky destroying was perfect because that'll let you know if you got it because he destroyed so hard on the second show uh, Friday to where people were looking at me like uh, you gonna go next? Yeah. You, and they kept going you, you up next? I'm like yeah I'm good trust me I, I went behind Jamie Foxx nigga right. you can't right. I didn't been to the, right. to the valley so I know so as soon as he, he, he did his shit stretched that out a little bit more did the church he does all he, that motherfucker funny man Yeah, Anything I heard you laughing funny. in your uh, periscope too yeah, yeah. I know you don't usually I don't, laugh. I don't laugh at other comedians. You that don't. nigga was funny as fuck. <laughs> and uh, so when he came off, man, it was like people, and you know, they, they gave me the little bullshit clap. All mm-hmm. right, we don't know this nigga. Where's, is Ricky <laughs> coming back? You know? And I destroyed the pill, the paint off that How ball. many so. times? One more time. <laughs> you destroyed. destroyed. I destroyed. Can we get this one more again. time? This okay, is one more do, I'll do time. it for you this way. You ready? Uh, the funniest motherfucker you ever going to meet. I heard he peeled the paint off of this shit. That's what I heard. I heard he destroyed. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, then anyway, it was a great show. And uh, again, shout out to uh, definitely hit that club up, man. If you live in Phoenix, we're going to come back. I'm going to come back. I'll I bring, like Phoenix. Yeah. I'll bring. Uh, hot. I'm trying to get down. Watch this. I'm going to bring some comedians. This nigga. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kente, I got you. A so me, you, and, uh, and the white boy. And the white boy. Yeah. Oh, they'll sure. love our that, team. That'll be a good show. Yeah, they, they, and that'll be a nice little. Because yeah. there's white folks in the audience. They oh, actually yeah. come out. And that, <laughs> it was so weird. It's, uh, White people there, and they're they having a great fucking time. Always. So, you know, I do my music bed, and I do the black music. And I say, look here, you know, white folks, I got y'all. You didn't get a chance to get in on your song. We played uh, Journey, and them motherfuckers lost their fucking I told you. <laughs> I told you to play Journey last week. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, I told you so to about that Journey. When the lights go like, down in the city. I'm, I'm going to give you a new name. We're going to start calling you the Interrupter. <laughs> Show your love for Interrupter. <laughs> I you it. killed I, this weekend, dude. <laughs> I swear, you killed this weekend. You killed the pain off day. I like that one. <laughs> and I made off. breakfast this morning, nigga. It was yeah. really good. We argued the whole time at the store. Cause she, cho- Cause who cooks in butter? You, eggs, uh, eggs, I do. Eggs are cooked. No, no yes, no, cooking butter. Eggs, yes, you guys gonna die. Yes, even the southern lady said, "Yeah." I and butter. you saw that bitch look like she just had a walker. <laughs> <laughs> bitch had the whole tube in her nose. Ask her arteries what they think. <laughs> yeah. You no. don't cook with butter. You My know, I cook with did coconut she did oil. The yep. that's you cook with coconut oil. Yeah. I used to do olive oil, and then I heard that when once it get heated, it, all the yeah separates. Yeah. Anyway, so it ain't no good. Coconut oil. Did you taste coconut? No, I didn't. Thank it you. It was good. I ain't gonna lie. Butter. Butter I back. I wanted to be good. That's why your hair is silky because it got butter in it. <laughs> Who cooks with butter? I do. I do too. You're not supposed to they cook with butter. They said butter's not bad for you But I see that you got the coconut oil. It's very good for you. Yeah. And good for your I mean, skin. Yeah. Good for your insides. Okay. Like Vicks. <laughs> <laughs> Put a little bit like on your spermicide. Tongue. Yeah, your your eggs and yeah, you, it was a what do you call that? Speedy? A scramble. Oh, damn! Sorry. Somebody damn. said a spread. <laughs> 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 now I need some coffee for that. Mm. And usually niggas in jail like dark. They don't want no cream, nigga. How you want your coffee? Black. Mm. Midnight star. Grounds. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. What'd what you, you, what you do this coffee? weekend, bro? Nigga. All right, moving on. Look oh, here. <laughs> Hold on. I need my own segment. I, went to I know bank. Speedy that took yeah. up. Yeah, all the goddamn time. Right. Talking about JoJo shitting. Right. Hey. I met the motherfucking president of the United States of America. You met Was who? you? What? Yes. What? I shook Obama's hand. As no, you didn't. No, nigga. you I didn't. Can't get that close. My mama. You can't get that. And close. my daughter. You can't get that. Yes, nigga. I didn't think I could because, you know, my identity got stolen. My sister uh, hooked up the tickets and she was like, give me your information. You had a thousand man march? No. And uh, he came up to the bay. He was. Oh. Okay. Yeah. He was. Oh, who the president? Yes. Oh, I thought you met you met him when he was here in Pal at Palisades. He came down here afterwards, but he was up there in San Francisco. Oh, so that's where you met him in the city. Yeah. Oh. Okay. And nigga, when I tell you, shake his hand for five seconds, you feel like you could take over the world. Feel like you can. He was like, "Fain it like a girl." Did you say my name? Can't say. Like it's Kente Scott. My sister's like, "That's my brother." He's like, "Hey, brother Kente." I was like, "Nigga, that's my brother Obama." Voting for you next. Week, I don't oh, give a shit. So, so how, wh- where were you at? You gotta go, like, you know, you gotta go through, you gotta have a band, mm-hmm. and then you go through the Secret Service, and of course, it's a white dude behind me. White dude's got this white privilege. The dude, the, the uh, volunteer says, You know, you can't get in there without a band. He's like, Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, uh, I have a ticket though, I'm sure I got a band somewhere. It's like, Secret Service not gonna let you in there. So, this dude, we walk down, Secret Service, he gets right behind me, and he right behind me. I'm like, That's white boy. Fucking your shit up. Yeah. yeah. So he like, uh, he looks at me and I'm like, uh, band. <laughs> like, you you that? showed your band yeah. when you got out the car. Hell yeah. And he was like, uh, sir, you can't get in without a band. He's like, oh, I, I thought I had one. Um, where did I get one? He's like, I don't know, but you can't get past me without a band. Secret Service, cool as shit. Yeah. Never gets upset, never raises their voice. He's like, well, I'm supposed to have one because I have a ticket. I'm supposed to be able to take a picture. He's like, you know what? Why don't you stay right here with me for a minute and we'll see if we can find somebody to get you a band. That white boy said, uh, no, I think I'm going to go up to the counter <laughs> and see if they got my ticket. I'm going to go. <laughs> so you go through this little maze, and he's like in the back. It's like it's like behind the step and repeat. Are you still watching it? How many uh, people no, would white you say was, was there? Oh, okay. Oh, in the event? Like, yeah, trying to, you know. Get oh, it's it's a bunch of them. Like it's, hundreds? It's, yeah, a couple hundred. Because couple, a couple okay. hundred people mm-hmm. could get get to go meet them. You know, you got to get vetted and all that stuff. And uh, so I go down there, and you come around the corner, and the president just stand there smiling. <laughs> Five feet away. How tall is he? Nigga was your whole inside jumping. Yeah, yeah. I was six like, one, six two. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, I got. That. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say some cool shit. I'm like, you know, I'm an active comedian. You ever need somebody to write for you? I'll let you boy. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you, it's very nice to meet. 
Oh, look. Yeah. Soft soap. Yeah, he's he like, don't take this picture. I know I'm smiling way too hard because they got to see you the picture. Did you get a picture? Yeah, they take Fuck a picture. Fuck you. Nigga, I'm winning. Then, on the way out, because, you know, Damn. my daughter my daughter is trying to play a coach. She's like, yeah, that's president. Then we come around the corner. Kanye West is right there, just standing. Oh, wow. Nigga, my daughter loses her damn mind. Yeah. Oh my God! Oh my God! She's she's a Kanye West fan. That reflects that. your uh, no. She loves that Kanye. You gotta let him reflects your <laughs> raising whatever. Yes. Whatever. whatever skills. So he he comes. And she shakes his hand. I shake Nate. I was like, "What's up?" He's like, hey, "Who's that?" And so she comes back, runs back down the stairs. Like, can I, can I take a picture with you? So I like, let me get this picture. And he says, "I like your jacket." To you? To my daughter. No, he said to you. No, nigga. He I said to you. Jacket, <laughs> Just say it. Said to Shut you. Up. It's okay, man. Uh, and she, she was like, and then she said the corniest shit ever. I thought of you when I bought it. I was like, what? <laughs> No, you didn't. She's like, I did, Daddy. I did. She took uh, the picture. Again, I'm going to go with poetess. <laughs> your parents. Who raised skills. you? Yeah, who raised you? My daughter starts crying. Like, uh, I met Kanye. I was like, Nikki, you just met wow, the president. Wow, and she Look, cried? So here's the shit. Oh, She's been a Kanye fan since she was like five. I was like, Poet. why? They both cried. Brother. They was both crying. Right, she was exactly. crying over Kanye. He was, I was crying, crying over the president. president. I was like, <laughs> she was like, I met Kanye. I was like, fuck Kanye. I met the president. Damn, the closest I got was at the inauguration, and I was on the side mm -hmm. where the... Uh, uh, Great radio people were. Yeah. And I could see him mm -hmm. really good. And then the nigga Fox and them got jammed. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Man. But I, I told the myself, like, I got I to gotta take a picture with him, man. Yeah. Oh, man. I know I you get, can't wait. I can't wait to get that picture. I'm blowing it up. It's going to be a poster. I'm going to put it right up on Crenshaw. It's going to be a Absolutely. billboard. Absolutely. If you think of how many hands you think he shaked Ooh. in his lifetime? I know. And then I was thinking, I was like, like, he probably got hand sanitizer in the back. Like, uh. No, because you don't want to do that because that makes it even worse because if you don't, because germs. It strips. Yeah. Uh, so you yeah. probably, he probably does it, but he shouldn't do it every time. Mm. Oh, like, yeah. He probably does it afterwards. But I know some people yeah. that do that. Like, yeah. as soon as they shake somebody's hand. You need to do the fist bump. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can't. Can't fist bump oh, the president. And then we in the back. He fist bumped uh yeah, but the that, first lady. That yeah. can't be your get down when people in the No, nah, you gotta shake That's your hand. That's my they get down. <laughs> they paying good money to shake his hand. <laughs> then we we downstairs, I forgot. Oh, you said uh, they paid good money. Yeah, they paid good money. Mm. Uh how did you get in, first of all? My sister hooked up. Oh, Bougetta? You know they're rich. Yeah. <laughs> call, call, call it what you want to, nigga. Bougetta got me to meet the president, so fuck y'all flatland niggas. Just, just a little bougie. Come on, I he give bougie. a fuck. Bougie got me to meet Obama. Bougie, so I will be with Bougie all day. Sister, <laughs> yeah. I'm riding with Bougie all day. Obama with Bougie, I'm with Bougie. Okay. Damn. Nigga, so we downstairs, and nigga, the lights go out. Nigga, just pitch black. With the president? Yes. Oh, Get the fuck no. Nigga, all you hear is uh, Secret Service move shit. Two little white kids and hit the fucking... Light switch. Did they choke the shit out of him? <laughs> Probably go Jonathan. They, they parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like my steps. <laughs> the, the, the girl's parents grab him by, what the hell are you doing? All the Secret Service is just looking at him like this. He's like, I'm sorry. I got this. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I, 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 Wait, my here's the thing. Did the president hey. jump? Did he move? Oh, no. This was before you saw the president. Oh, okay. So everything froze except for the Secret Service. The lights came back on. Niggas was like, hands in pockets. Oh, I was really? Like, uh, they finna kill somebody. Whose kids was little white kids all up against the wall playing with switches? Mm -hmm. I didn't show the shit out of them. Yeah, you know they was in. Bob Seger serve. Who's right when the lights came back on? I've been right here. Oh my bad. <laughs> on the jugular. <laughs> just shake them up. Yeah, they be all right. Shake them up. They be all right. Yeah. Yeah. Yours, I don't know if you Trump because nigga JoJo in the bathroom. <laughs> nigga, the president. We can't park the plane. We can't get off the plane. We can't get off the plane. I give a fuck about a shit ass crackhead. I met the president. Did you call him a crackhead? I did to his face. I will say it. I Ooh, doubt yeah. it. He'll probably be in the bathroom. But. I know, he'll be in the bathroom. Ain't nobody scared of JoJo. That nigga 96 pounds. <laughs> and you're 90. I'm 170. I can beat JoJo. I get fucked. <laughs> Shit. A buck 70? Yeah. I was a buck 70 in high school. God, that was a long time ago. Ain't that a bitch? Watch your tongue. You he was a buck 70 at birth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my no? God. Yeah. Like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Only a buck fifty. And how was the flag football game? Yeah, Receive the Raiders. Did they? Put did that? you go to the did game? You, oh, hold up, hold up. No, 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 no. You supposed to break up with that nigga? She this has weekend. stuff to do. You supposed to break up with that nigga this weekend? Did he get you? Per you? Did you get some? No. Oh. No, I did not. But I had stuff. That I had. Uh, yeah, come up with issues. Yeah, so well. Pam, may I ask? Uh huh. How long has it been between you two? Two Probably months. Two months. Since yeah. the four hour. But why? Yeah, since the four hour. Well, well, first, like I said, he shingles. pulled the groin, and I had the shingles for the two weeks, and then, you know. Nigga, you've been off the shingles for, like, three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks but, yeah. but I just, like, <laughs> one shingle left. was a busy mm. weekend for both of us. I'm not feeling very good about this. Hey, we told you to dump the nigga on Friday. <laughs> I know you She can't me. do it. 
Why? I had to call and apologize. So I thought we was a little hard on her. He it's did not, call but me. She said, can't, Pam, I love you. And then he gave me all the tea. But I was like, okay. Yeah, because I felt we were hard. And I knew she, because when you hit somebody that hard, she wasn't going to leave him. She's not going to leave. She's not going to leave, dude. Just act like she's not here. Watch this. She's not going to leave him. She's going to be with this motherfucker. For what? Till he go, I don't want to be with you. And she's going to go, why? We can work it out. When is birthday? I'll pay your rent. When is birthday? Uh, this I'll buy your car. You going to buy, buy you going to get him something for his birthday? You, I will you know, fuck I you up. You think about that. I will. Do you bet not. <laughs> Don't I buy him nothing. Really, no, you I better not. Won't. No, don't do that. <laughs> you probably won't. That means you will. Mm, I probably yeah, won't, yeah, but right. I did. Get a whole mm. box of brand new motherfucker Jordan. Shit. And <laughs> Call of Duty. Uh, fuck. For new controller for the Xbox. <laughs> Damn, I hate Pam. Damn. You get no there? So you dickless in Seattle? Yes, I am. It's, it's really sad. But, so, but, you, but you got your box. You got that drawer though. Oh yeah, yeah. So funny. I so which to- one did you use last night? I didn't Damn, use one last baby. night, but I went to this uh, this party for my family, and it was like a bingo thing, but the proceeds went to cancer, mm-hmm. and they had uh, ratchet gifts. Guess what I got? Uh, Bunny? A rabbit? Uh, yes, a dildo. I was like, and nobody wanted it, so I was like. <laughs> like was I'll it used? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was in a box or whatever, so. She probably you know. didn't care. She had a motherfucking, it was red to go. Yeah, give me this better. <laughs> but uh, wait, we got to go. Fuck my weekend? No, no, we finna get to your weekend. Oh, because okay. she was just telling us how she got a and free she uh, do dildo. Nothing. She yeah, got a saying, dildo, but... and no. yeah, how many like... do you have? How many do you need? You know what? I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, a lot. Uh... I mean, do you just reach in with your eyes closed? And go this one. No, you know what? It's a mood that strikes, mm. pretty much. So which one gets the most play? Yeah. The bullet gets the most because it's the most convenient and small, and, and it's it gets very right powerful. To it. Yeah, very, very powerful. Very and powerful. Then there was this other thing that I got from Dennis. Um, it's like a purple thing long with a ball on it. Oh, yeah, I got... Oh, you, Wait, oh so you me, did come back with something. You got one, too? No, I, I don't have it. It's just in my house. So. <laughs> yeah, but I got that one for dinner. That's my second It's in that favorite. drawer that still the women the, have. Uh-huh. Still in the packaging. No, no. 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 Well, it's been washed a couple of times. Oh, oh, I wow. He said, remember, he said he doesn't do... No, I didn't say I don't do that. But you oh. said you don't want it in the bedroom. Both no, I didn't say I didn't want it. I said I just don't understand it. If I'm there, why we got that? You because wasn't you wasn't there. It ain't. <laughs> <laughs> she like go outside and water the grass. Uh, we don't have no grass. <laughs> That's all right. Find some grass. I'll be back in twenty minutes. <laughs> but you don't do that, P. Right? You know none of your bit. Ah, yeah. You'd know better to be asking me some shit like that. Anyway, uh, my weekend was cool. <laughs> what did you do? Oh, um, <laughs> Friday night, uh, I went to the Legends and Icons Award uh, ceremony. Nice. It's a ceremony where, um, you know, people in the black music industry mm. are honored. Um, and it was very nice. It's always good when you are honored by your own. So there were some industry executives, uh, Big Boy from... Mm. Um, uh, 92.3 here in L.A. Um, was honored amongst a, a lot of other folks. But it was mm. nice. And then they had a follow-up picnic on yesterday. Oh, we don't call it picnic. Cookout. Barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> Cookout. Yeah, we don't call it picnic. It's pick a nigga. And that was cool. Oh. There was a bunch Did of... You know uh, Pam? I didn't know that. And I forgot about it. Too, yeah, so. well, when I hashtagged the event yesterday, I did not put picnic because <laughs> I, I, I pick understand that. Pick right. <laughs> And so there was some R and B folks there. There was um, wasn't JoJo Kashif. Oh, uh, Kashif, that's old Kashif, school. Kashif, uh, still got Midnight the Star. Hey, wow, Man, yeah, it was some old school. Yeah. <laughs> aren't they? That's eighties, right? That old. Yeah. 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 Like it was. 60s nigga, them niggas was old, but when they, they made singing. very hey, good music. They did. They sure did. Their Ooh. music are their music is classic. He's about to have an unsung. Yeah, his unsung is Wednesday. Yeah. Why you act like you 22, nigga? Hey, nigga, them niggas was old when I was... They had eight tracks Nigga, if you had eight tracks you owed to me. Hey, well, Kashyyyk, uh, maybe. If you had an album no, on the eight track no, I don't think Star, those no. guys were no, eight No, not Midnight Star. No, Chief look old on Unsung, and I don't know how old he really is. You saw, how you uh, he'll be here right Wednesday, so I want you to say that. I yes, I would love no, to I hope. say that. <laughs> 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 what you gonna call it? I'm at the president's house. Nigga, I'm at the president, you look old as fuck. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Kashif, um, <laughs> they gonna scrap yeah, you now? Get, yeah, Kashif and Kente gonna fight. <laughs> <laughs> what they fighting over? They gonna pull each other's hair. <laughs> oh, oh, you did. What they fighting over? Dashiki. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, Kashif is one of the uh, best producers. Yeah, he was at one time in R and B. Yeah, he was, well, he was killing huge. it for a minute. Yeah, he, him and uh, I would go with. Uh, oh, not O'Brien, <laughs> but the Chucky Booker. Chucky Booker. Chucky, yeah. Booker. Yeah. Chucky, yeah. Chucky yeah. Booker was. I was Chucky what's was the killing one from it. Chic. Uh, Nile Rodgers too. Yeah, I saw his unsung. Woo! Do you see their unsung? No, but I did see good. Casey and the Sunshine Band. And I, I saw that. The other day. I, I have it, I had that one saved, so I got to watch it. Yeah, that I got to watch, watch it. Too. I was the Casey and the Sunshine Band fan. Really? Right. Yes. He was the finest white boy ever. Huh? Wait a minute. <laughs> Not no more. Wait, yeah, like he was yeah and you know what? I have yeah. a funny story about <laughs> like that. Like Joe Piscopo. Did. Yeah, he does. So a couple, yeah, a couple years ago, <laughs> they were at the House of Blues. I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to see Casey in the Sunshine Band. That's a whole. I get there. And I see a picture of Casey on the marquee. I was like, shit, I ain't spending my $35. <laughs> yeah. I didn't go. Because yeah, he, he, he out of shape. He don't care. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't. Let me just oh, remember <laughs> him so the shallow. way he used to be. You so <laughs> His album cover up. How you drive that far <clears throat> and pay for parking and go, uh-uh. <laughs> I ain't going in there. Oh, hey. mess up my memories. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, because he's going to be sweating. I'm trying to think who I met. That didn't look like. I know who it was. Who? Jesse. Yeah, Jesse Johnson. Yeah, that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shocked me, and I. I, had I sex must with say, him. I was. You so, had sex with Jesse Johnson? Yeah. I was oh so. Oh my dis- gosh, she said yeah. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah, she threw that in there. I had. I that shocked me, and I had sex with him. <laughs> when did it shock you? Before you fucked him or after? That was the only one that I just was absolutely like, wow, man, this is the bullshit. But most of these entertainers, when you meet yeah. them, they are really short in person. Well, the short part, I didn't mind. What, he had fake hair or something? He had no hair. His oh, hair was stop. gone. He had a little he, he natural. Was, I told the story. You weren't Speedy here. Speedy was yeah. uh, looking forward to that Jerry Curl shag. <laughs> and, and, the pants that came, and the pants that came up really high. So I thought he was going to He thought that. he was going to answer the yeah. door in costume. And put the long jacket oh and God. be like... Dun, dun, and a Jesse, and then some little short motherfucker, little you felt, fire hydrant built motherfucker came to the door and said, "What's happening?" I said, "Hey, nigga, where's Jesse? so you felt like you felt like Dorothy when she came to the back door of the Wiz, like nigga, yeah. wait a minute, and hear the shit because he's short, so I'm looking over like nigga, where's Jesse? And my man's like, "Hey, man, you funny, thank you, but could you?" He's pat him on his back. Go on now. Go find yeah, Jesse. Yeah, go find Jesse. Bro. And so I was there with my see my boy pretty Terry, and I said, "Terry, where's Jesse?" He said, "Nigga, he was at the door." I said, "Who?" The Oompa? The Oompa. He said, Jesse came to the door. You got to guess. He came back out in full guard. He's like, that's the nigga I'm talking about. (laughs) No, he came back out. I said, that was me. I went, hey. (laughs) You know, I had my phone ready, nigga. I was like, you ready to go, nigga? We going. That's that bullshit. But mostly all the females that I've, like, uh, Jill Scott, have you met her oh, yet? What? Have you met? Oh, of course okay, he so, has. so I, do, I know you cute me, but I gotta tell the story. So we're on tour. Mm-hmm. We go to Philly, and uh, Jill's there. So Jill come meet Fox, and then I'm standing there like a fucking girl. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. And then Fox go, "Oh, let me introduce you to my boy, who think you the finest motherfucker in the world. This is my boy Speedy." I went, hi, hi, "Hey, I like your music." <laughs> and she's like, oh, and then she, she's all hugging, yeah. and we took a picture, and then she sent me the picture. I had a picture with me and Jill, and then she she did the she did the cover of Ebony, mm-hmm. and she gave me that cover, and they had it framed. Oh, Damn. nice, and, thanks, and, baby. Dang. I, I, Got if action. Said, if Fox go, Nick, I can ask for the number. I like. <laughs> She is single, Why isn't she? Yeah, the single when I met her. Yeah, you could holler. I, mm-hmm. I could, I couldn't focus. I froze. Did you Cindy Brady on? Nigga, I was frozen pond. Mm. I was, I, I was starstruck. Cause wow. she's super fine, yeah, very beautiful. Uh, my my flavor to the wheels. She nigga. got tiggos, mm-hmm. tiggo bitties, big old thighs, lips, and can sing, sing me to sleep, nigga. And she could, and she could. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think who I was starstruck for. Oh, Kobe. Ew. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant yeah. So he wasn't who you thought he was, or no? I just was just kind of uh, uh, Kobe uh, Bryant. Uh, uh, I, yeah, because he's great. Come on now. He's cool, but damn, he's fine. He's one of the best players Wait, of all time. On. And oh. I just was like, oh, you say good. Kobe was fine. See, who who you starstruck over? I was definitely Kobe. Um, I think um, I'm always starstruck over the underdog that that's very talented and they don't get their props most of the time. Like who? Uh, one one was Kindred, the Family Soul. When I saw yeah. them, I was like, oh my god, I love you. But yeah. I think Dave Chappelle when I met him. Oh, okay. You, know? you was yeah. like giddy. A little giddy, and he made some weed jokes. I said, oh, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you want to date me? Okay, cool. <laughs> no, nah, he was mad cool, though. Dave was really, yeah. really cool. So I yeah, think I, those two. But I did get very giddy when I met um, uh, Fox. Natalie Cole. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> Natalie Cole. Oh, eh, I said yes. next her, her eyes were Did you beautiful. say eh, and you said Kobe Bryant? Yeah. Yes. I mean, but Kobe I did, I did, is I did, everything I did. to me. I will say this much. We talked shit about Kobe one night. Uh-huh. And we was uh, performing at the uh, uh, Kia, uh-huh. Nokia. And uh, so they said Kobe's on the one. Well, fuck about Kobe, nigga. Me and Fox, nigga, fuck that nigga. Nigga, uh, LeBron, the best player. This nigga ain't shit. Nigga, Kobe walked in. I went, hey, Kobe. <laughs> they be talking about you. <laughs> nigga, I was sitting there like, hey, Kobe. I'm like, why are my shoulders in? What the fuck is wrong? <laughs> are you and and everybody in the room like, nigga, you was talking shit. I ain't Kobe. I would never say that. <laughs> Because when he walked in, that nigga had that presence. Yeah, it is a and as much shit as I was talking, I, as soon as he came in, I went, hey. It's true. Man. That's like going to be Kente when Kashif come in. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Man, Kashif is not the old school nigga that I'll be like, oh my God, Kashif. No, nigga. I don't even know none of nah. your songs, nigga. But I was really, I was nigga. I know. I couldn't talk. About neither one of us could talk shit about it. And so Cole gets to talking, uh-huh. and then Fox goes, so what do you think? He started naming our player. Mm-hmm. Cole like, he don't want to see me. That motherfucker don't want to see me. He was named from the nigga in Miami. All them niggas didn't want to see him. And uh, so then he gets to LeBron. Mm -hmm. And Fox said, what about LeBron? Cole went, he nice. Yeah, he all right. Oh, really? I said, for real? He He nice. But everybody else, he's like, them niggas don't want to see me. Okay, so this will be the last time we tell the story. (laughs) Because I think you told it (laughs) on the show at least five times. (laughs) Do you really want to? Do you really want to speak? Oh, hell no. Song, nigga. It's your new rollout show. We're gonna take a quick break. Come right back again. I'm the funniest motherfucker you ever know. You killed that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you ain't got no suit no more. I had to Drum. Run. fired. <laughs> Nothing back together. Yet. Anyway, it's the all new rollout show right here at Morris Media Studios. It's your boy Speed Doggy Dog, the funniest motherfucker you ever gonna meet. <sighs> You killed that shit, Steven. <laughs> killed the paint off son. of it. Straight, son. I'm the poetess. <laughs> Nikki Pam in the house. Can't tell you from the yay. I met the president. <laughs> <laughs> in the building right now. Pink, go do your thing. Do what you do. Because you don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> in the building with us um, is former homicide detective Greg Kading. He was actually on the um, murder case for uh, the Notorious B.I.G. We had R.J. Bond on a couple weeks ago, and I think Mr. Kading got wind of that <laughs> and hit us up and wanted to kind of respond to some of the things that um, that R.J. had to say. So... Let's welcome Greg Kading to the show. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have your claps real up. claps, real claps, real claps. Hold, hold on. Claps, yeah, real put, claps. put the real we, we got some other claps. In. I got to coordinate y'all for it. There you go. <laughs> now, uh, Greg, I just want to let you know, when you called us, you scared the shit out. You can't uh, call yeah. black people and go, hey, how you guys doing? Um, this is detective. detective and, and I did like, I said, hang it up, hang it up, hang it up. I ain't this shit wrong. Said, hang it up. We'll figure out shit later. So at first we're like, uh, what we do? Kente? I wasn't even here. Oh, I you were Yeah, as soon as I played the message back to uh, Speedy, he got pretty nervous. Yeah, I was nervous. You know, yeah. he, he got outstanding things. Those are, yeah. Once. Allegedly. Uh, uh, Allegedly. A song called Outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Yes, man. So tell us about the book, man. He gave us a book. And yes, definitely nice. read this. Yeah, this is a Thank book I wrote you. back in, I uh, um, published back in 2011, so it's four years old now. Mm. Uh, it basically outlines and details the investigations of Tupac Shakur and mm. Piggy Smalls um, that I was involved in during the, the uh, last part of my career with the LAPD. So after I retired, since the public had been given so much misinformation about Mm -hmm. the murders and what had actually taken place, I I felt the responsibility to at least, uh, you know, um, educate them on what we had discovered during our investigation. Wow. And and what what was discovered, like, that was different than what the uh, public was told? Well, the the original theory behind Tupac's murder, that it was some Southside Crips, that's the accurate Mm -hmm. explanation for that murder. Okay. There's some other um, related type of events that go along with that but that common sense conclusion Mm -hmm. that it was the Crips and they responded to a beat down of one of their own at the MGM just Mm -hmm. prior to Tupac shooting that was what precipitated the murder itself okay and so the streets kind of always knew that that was the most likely explanation 
but then once a bunch of conspiracy theories right. started to you know um to spawn and and to uh because uh, most people assume and i guess i would have to be that as well as that it had that well if you that tupac and the biggie were all connected in a, connected were in they? A sense. Yeah, they certainly were and that was always our sense too we mm -hmm. figured you know the the time frame and the type of people the the gang members that were associated with these crews um that that there was likely going to be some connection between the two and we discovered that that was in fact the case mm -hmm. okay wow. so now um we had as i mentioned we had rj bond on the show what are the differences between both of your theories um and wasn't detective uh pool on the case as well or do you, did you guys work together on the case uh how, uh, you know. Yeah, Detective Poole preceded me. He was on the case for about a year, just after Biggie was murdered. Back, mm -hmm. uh, he left, I think, in 1998 or 1999 um, from the from the police department. He was on the case for about a year, and um, you know, he had developed somewhat of a theory on his own. But the theory that he was working with was meeting a lot of resistance at the LAPD. Mm. He was running with this theory that there was some some rogue cops mm. involved with death row record security mm -hmm. and that they were the ones who were solicited by Suge Knight. But isn't that true? Absolutely not. As far as the security or as far as them being involved in the murder? Uh, involved. Being involved with that whole death row camp. Absolutely not. There were cops that were working off duty for death row records. For mm -hmm. Reggie Wright Jr., he was the head of security at death row. Mm -hmm. He did have cops that were moonlighting from Inglewood, from Compton, a couple guys from LAPD. So there were cops associated with that security. But as far as their involvement in the murder of, of Biggie Smalls, completely refuted. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no evidence to support it. Uh, the only thing that Russell Poole had right was that there was a Suge Knight connection. But the person that was actually used to do the shooting was a gang associate. And we were able to completely refute the idea that there was some LAPD cop. So if you guys know this, why hasn't anyone been arrested in the case yet? Well, unfortunately, by the time that we got this information from the actual co-conspirators, mm. um, so many years have gone by. I, I worked this till night 2009. So in 2008 and 2009, we were able to get two of the co-conspirators, one in each of the murders, mm. to come forward and confess to their involvement. Mm. One was Suge Knight's girlfriend, and the other was a Southside Crip, a guy named Keefe D., who was the uncle. Don't be naming names on this show. <laughs> Shit. You know what? coming after us. <laughs> right. hey, hey, let me talk to you <laughs> niggas about Keefe D. <laughs> I don't know no Keefe D. <laughs> Well, I, I, I guess that's the difference then going back to your original question be between what I'm doing and what R.J. Bond does. Because I do name names, but I name names based on actual evidence, mm -hmm. okay. off testimonial evidence, off, um, you know, the evidence that we get had collected at the crime scenes from mm -hmm. witnesses. Him and the work that he's done in the past is completely speculative based. It's mm -hmm. all just theories that essentially falsely accuses mm -hmm. innocent people mm -hmm of these crimes and that's where we're trying to you know say that there's some social responsibility involved if you're promoting these ideas you better have something to back it up instead of wild theories and speculation because that's pretty much what it's been since both yeah. uh, were shot has been well we think because most you know streets was i think the I've, sugar has something to do with it i yeah, think all the that way it probably and this is just uh, a guess or speculation is that if the police weren't involved, I think the, the case would have been solved. I think because there may have been some police involvement, that's why there has been no, no one arrested on this case. Because there is some alleged corruption there. So Listen, we route out police corruption all the time. I mean, we arrest... Not enough, though. Well, <laughs> it's may, not in may, there. maybe not enough, but <laughs> Damn, to respond to your point, and I appreciate it, <clears throat> Uh, you know, we do have corruption, and we do have dirty cops. There's no doubt about it. But we are also pretty good at finding out who they are. We arrest our own for murder and for bank robbery and for drug theft. You know, we, 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 we do actively attempt to like... It's like with this David Mack and Rafael Perez, the two guys that were allegedly mm -hmm. involved in, in the murder of Biggie. Well, where'd they go? To prison, built on what work? The work of cops. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that put them into prison. Mm -hmm. We're the ones that found the evidence to put them away. Mm -hmm. So to then go back and say, well, yeah, but you'll, you'll then cover up for them on the murder of a, 
of a celebrity. Mm. Yeah. What now? Why are you guys like R.J. Bond and Poole and yourself writing books about this? Have is this? Uh, uh, I mean, you guys have solved many mysteries or um, you know crimes in the past. Why are you guys so focused on this and so much to the point? where you're writing books and doing documentaries because a lot of people think um, that you guys are in this for the profit of it all. But I mean, that's why people do write books, do write documentaries. Well, would, yeah. Some That's one reason <laughs> yeah. why, but what's your reason? Well, initially I was, I was a little bit disappointed with the police department's um, lack of fortitude when it came to um, continuing to investigate Biggie's murder. Mm -hmm. Now what prompted my involvement in this investigation was that there was a massive lawsuit against the city of Los Angeles by Biggie's mom and, mm -hmm. and Faith Evans, his, his ex-wife. Mm -hmm. And that lawsuit was potentially going to cost the city hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And so when they realized that, they said, hey, we need to put together an emergency task force, really to see if we can get to the bottom of this. At the time, we incorporated all the other federal agencies, the ATF, the DEA, the FBI, in order to join us in this task force so that when we did come to conclusions, it wouldn't have that impression that now the LAPD is just covering up for itself. Mm -hmm. We brought in all these mm -hmm. outside agencies um, to give the investigation credibility. And so what it ended up happening is once we figured out what happened in the murder of Biggie Smalls and the city became aware of it, they then gave that information to Valletta Wallace and her attorney, mm -hmm. at which time they realized we better just retract our lawsuit because we're wasting our money. Mm -hmm. We're not okay. going to get anywhere. Okay. Because in court, they won't be able to prove something when we have the facts. So they retracted their lawsuit. It was dismissed. And at that point in time, the LABD said, hey, you know, game's over. We spent enough time, energy, and resources investigating this. It's now 2009. Mm -hmm. Many of the witnesses are dead. The shooter's dead. Wow. And they said There's, the prosecution is so unlikely that we'll just let sleeping dogs lie. I wasn't comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the public has a, a right to know. Now, these guys were massive, you know, yeah. uh, icons in the music industry. And there was so much misinformation that when I left, I, I felt responsible to tell the story about what took place. So basically you're saying that uh, Biggie is solved. You guys know, or does the public, I'm not getting... And then, and then the other thing, too, mm -hmm. is like that was Soul Train Award weekend, and um, it was at the Car Museum mm -hmm. over there Peterson. on Pico and yeah. Peterson, uh, um, right there on Wilshire and mm -hmm. Fairfax. Mm -hmm. Cops, I mean, everybody. every time there's like a big major black event, there's cops everywhere. Why weren't the guys who shot Biggie caught? Because there was cops there. There was cops in the area. There actually wasn't. What had happened, there was there a There wasn't? No, there wasn't. Mm. Now, what had happened just before this, about nearly an hour before, a guy outside had dropped a gun and accidentally discharged a firearm. That brought the cops. So every cop in L.A. was at that scene? No, of course not. I mean, <laughs> if you, you, you think about it, you, know, you hear a gunshot you know, in the streets. Mm. A cop comes, he checks it out. If there's nothing there, they go on. Mm -hmm. They don't sit around and do this big, massive investigation for something of that caliber. So the cops had responded, but they left. The problem at the Peterson was really about the crowds. It had gotten over, uh, completely overrun, overcrowded. Fire department shut yeah, it down. That's why they, yeah. yeah. I so the fire department came and shut it down. And when the fire department was asking for the police to respond to help break up the crowds, it was at that time when, when Biggie and his entourage were leaving and a, a lone uh, SS Impala pulled up alongside of it, quickly shot into the passenger door, made a right turn onto Wilshire and disappeared into the night. Mm. I mean, it all took place in a That's matter of seconds. That's similar to Pac, too. Because very similar. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah. very. The, yeah. There's a lot of similar similarities in the two shootings. Um, but to think that, hey, you know, a cop should have been there to, to witness it or at least to give chase, and the timing just didn't work out that okay. way. Okay, it's only fair for me to ask, and I'm, I'm totally objective to this, so I'm not taking sides or anything, sure. but at doing my research on, your, on you and mm -hmm. the show, you were taken off the case. I was. I was taken off the case um, due to another federal investigation that I had been in. Mm -hmm. I had written a search warrant. Uh, this was a racketeering investigation on a, uh, 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 it was kind of an organized crime investigation. And uh, I made some errors in that search warrant. Mm -hmm. I'd misquoted something that was on a tape. I said, what did you do to this guy instead of um, what had, there was some very minor clerical errors. Mm -hmm. That caused that search warrant to be dismissed. During that period of time, the LAPD said, we don't need this kind of um, 
we don't need this kind of uh, s s skepticism, criticism mm -hmm. of the Biggie Smalls case. So we're going to set you aside until we do this investigation, mm -hmm. which they did, and they came back and said the same thing. They, they were clerical errors, mm -hmm. and that was the that was the. Experiment. So are you still on the force? That's going to ask. No, I retired a year after that. I retired in 2010. Okay. Uh, on your own, or you just like I'm tired of this, or. It was a combination of two things. I was tired. I'd mm. been in law enforcement for 25 years. Shit. I ran hard mm. in the city of Los Angeles, and I was kind of burned out. Mm. I was also, like I said, a little bit disappointed in the department's attitude of kind of indifference mm -hmm. about these individuals mm -hmm. and their families and the people that we aren't telling the truth to. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, uh, like you said, you were taking off the case. Now, when you're taking off a case, because I think a lot of the public see CSI and and cop shows and be like, well, they solve it in an hour. Why can't they solve it in <laughs> twenty years? <laughs> so does that start the v investigation back to square one? If like you pool was on it before you, then you, then you're taking off. So another investigator comes. So do they on. have to start from do scratch? Do they have to like almost start from scratch each time, or kind of? Um, what happens? You've just continually building up these case files, and they're enormous. I mean, hundreds of thousands of pages of material and hundreds of interviews that you have to review. So if a new guy comes in and picks up the case, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take him in this in this situation at least a year to really wrap his head wow. around mm -hmm. what's going wow. on. Okay. It was that complicated. Mm -hmm. And so it takes a long time to get up and get going and get a feel for what you're doing. And so in that sense, yeah, it's like right. starting from scratch. Okay, and, and another question I have. Are there in the police department, or even in the district attorney's office, like priority murders, like O.J. Simpson case, we just use that. Right. They were on that like pit bulls. But Tupac, two years later, you know, I know it wasn't in L.A., but still a, a high-profile murder never gets solved. So is there like we got to get this, you know, situation? I think, I, think, I, think I would assume it is, but go ahead. There are, you know, they do prioritize murders or give different levels of resources mm -hmm. to to solve murders. Where I worked was robbery homicide division. That's the division where we take most of the high profile cases, more of the complicated cases, cases that we know are going to take a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. Your divisional detectives that are dealing with the guy that gets shot on the street corner, the dope dealer, the gang member, those don't usually get the kind of resources that a that a Biggie Smalls investigation is going to get, okay. or an O.J. Simpson, you know, you get one little cop going. Oh, I, I looked, I ain't seen nobody. All right, come on in. <laughs> yeah, see nothing happen. Uh, let me ask you this: as far as you know, because we have people call in all the time, and you know, we are black. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <I> think <laughs> is there? And I don't know if you could say it or not, but is there? Uh, do you look for a certain type of person? Like we used to call the police one time because they see you one time make the U turn, mm -hmm. and you see that U turn, you're like, God. Damn. Yeah, ain't got your seatbelt on everything. W could you actually say y'all have a profile that you look for? Is it a baseball hats, or four dudes? And we used to think four dudes in the car, you gonna get pulled up. Every cop's different, so I can't speak for everybody. Okay. Uh, for me personally, everything for me is more instinctual. Okay. You get a vibe. Oh, okay. You know, if somebody's acting suspicious, it's like you said, if they looking over their shoulder more than one time, yeah. mm -hmm. then you maybe you turn around. I, just, I look forward. I just go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I act like y'all ain't even there. I, I but you know a, what? We get, a mannequin, the, we thing is, the thing is, we get nervous whether we're innocent yeah. or not. Exactly. That's just it's just, it's yeah. just yeah. nerve wracking to yeah. have a cop behind you, period, because. And we know y'all just probably going to lunch, but so, yeah, at that time we don't know that. We so if we could be innocent and be acting nervous because you're behind us. Right. I mean, and okay, no way to answer that. One. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. me Listen, and I. You pops, got pulled over because you're fidgety, bitch. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fidgety ass talking. <laughs> Sit down and calm down. I we saw you, you hit the joint, bitch. <laughs> oh, I'm playing. Go ahead. Cops have a tendency to make everybody nervous. Yeah. My, if my kid's yeah. going down the street and I, he's got weed in his car, he's going to be nervous. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and he's a white kid with long blonde hair. So people naturally get nervous around cops. But, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, because of the problems that we've had in the city and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe growing up and having a different perspective, I can, I can certainly Are you born and raised here that. in L.A.? No, I wasn't. I was uh, actually up in Northern California is where I was oh, born. Yeah, yes. yeah, we yeah. 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 What part? Lake Tahoe. Oh, oh. oh that's <laughs> 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 that's not 
not even California. I thought you at least say Sacramento. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Me and my mom and my that's dad. Past, yeah, that's past everything. So, you had a good life. That's at the top of the sea in California. Damn. <laughs> so, uh, Can I do this one? Go I know ahead. You got one. Uh-huh, go ahead. All right, so you did robbery. What was the weirdest thing somebody tried to do in, like, steal? Or, or what was the weirdest case you did in robbery? From like the stupidest motherfucker. Like people, somebody from the streets or a yeah. cop? Yeah, well, no, from anybody. the street, from the street. Uh, I don't know. I mean, what comes to mind is something I probably even shouldn't say on the air. It's oh. just a, a kind of bizarre thing. Well, you said the <laughs> whole biggie the... thing. Yeah, we, that we, that we, was the question a I want to piggyback <laughs> off of Speedy. Are you, like, is there certain things that you're not supposed to tell because it's uh, still, it's an, is it an open case or have they closed it? Well, I'm sure from the perspective of the police department, they don't appreciate me out here telling the story mm-hmm. about oh, what's inside shit. the investigation. Oh, <laughs> damn. Pull it over as soon as we leave. <laughs> okay, Speedy, step out the car. How do you know my name? Don't worry about it. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> you ride with Pam. <laughs> you know what? Because somebody did warn us about like having you guys on the show mm-hmm. like this. Fuck I that, mean, man. should we it's be like concerned? That. We got a gate. Absolutely not. <laughs> we have a gate. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of crackheads outside that's going to pre-warn us. <laughs> no, but they're, they're are, here, here. Are, by law or legally, are you allowed yeah, as to retired. tell? Are, are there some things that you haven't revealed because you're not allowed to? No, I'm, I'm comfortable talking about every single thing that uh, I know about the case. And mm-hmm. there's no recourse for the department. You know, I have you know, rights to come out and speak my mind mm-hmm. and tell what happened. I'm sure, like I said, they may not appreciate it. Um, but the story is bigger than the LAPD. It's certainly bigger than me. It's bigger than Keefe D and Suge Knight and all these other we people. We not repeat his name. Keefe no <laughs> 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 like, D's cousin. You know, the show. Okay. Hey, nigga, you seen uh, Keefe D? They ain't got no Wi Fi. There he's at Starbucks. What did the nigga say? <laughs> he said something about Keefe D. Can I get some more whipped cream on my latte? Then I'm going to go smoke somebody. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. <laughs> um, so, is the case still open? It's still considered an open case, as, as you guys have probably heard, that uh, murder cases don't have a statute of limitations. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you this, and this speaks for both the LAPD and Las Vegas PD, they're considered solved. Oh, uh, okay. That was going to ask. It, How they is know, it still open, then, if it's considered it's, solved? Well, because they haven't... Because somebody's in jail. Yeah. Are, okay. every, yeah, are somebody. everybody involved, that could be the... The person who did it, the main suspect, is dead? Is that why? Or? Both the shooters in Biggie and Tupac's murders are dead. Mm-hmm. Oh, Orlando wow. Anderson and a guy named Wardell Faust. Well, I Both guess those there guys it are is. You, it'll mm-hmm. never... Yeah. Kind of hard to put him in jail now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get up out that grave, nigga. Turn over. <laughs> put the casket in cell number 12. <laughs> Damn. Now, when you... I have Y'all friends out there, please, officer, as well. Now, were you... When you got off work, were you off work? Or you still kind of had a... I know, like... If we see it took about a year to decompress, about a year before I kind of realized that I needed to have an identity outside of the police department. Because you spend that much time and mm-hmm. you, you turn into, you know, a cop. And after retiring? A year after you retired? A year, oh. yeah. About a year to kind of decompress and wow. figure out how to move See somebody running, you go, oh, I'm going to let him go. <laughs> <laughs> Take three steps. Oh, that's yeah. too short. Chased. He, he was telling us yeah. a story about when he came, about the... Yeah, what happened? Somebody, when somebody, he came in, you were saying that somebody... Well, even though I'm not a cop, evidently <laughs> people still perceive that I am because I'm you pulling into... You have a cop the, look. Yeah. Yeah, copish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great cop. So what happened? You know, I'm pulling into the alley to come into the back parking lot, and this guy's walking his pit bull down the alley, and he's like, looks at me, and he looked more than one time. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. Hey, I'm not a cop anymore. <laughs> oh, that's our security. <laughs> That's a whistleblower for us. <laughs> they're, they're, they're pretty really? good because I almost left. Yeah, I was Were like, you, okay, you, I'm leaving. And you weren't even in a squad car. Nah. What was you driving? A little Subaru. A little crumb. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it from... Uh, <laughs> okay, so, um, Greg, you're also planning to release a documentary this year? Yeah, on November 9th on Reels, a documentary is going to come mm-hmm. out that was based on the book. It, it's It's... Much more detailed than the book because we can show images, we can show documents, we can yeah, actually, no pictures. We, Speedy ain't got to read it then. Oh, there we go, got a picture. And uh, <laughs> you know, we've got actually some of the, the we we in the documentary we have the confessions of oh. those individuals wow. that were the co-conspirators. So wow. 
You've got Keefe D on tape talking cool about it's his. on tape. It's November night, he's gonna be on TV. He gonna be everywhere. Keefe D family go play. He don't blame. He don't blame us. Well, let's go to Reels Network too then. I know where that studio at, Dom. I know that nigga that own that pet bull. I know that nigga. At. Um, hey, Charlie Willie. So that's Charlie. gonna be on Keefe D cousin. Nigga. That's gonna be on Reels Network. Yeah, on Reels, oh, okay. November fourteenth, and uh, yeah. yeah, and it's yeah, it's, check that out. It's an hour documentary or two. It's hours? two hours. Oh, okay. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah, it's two hours and it's full of all kinds. I mean, you can't not you can't watch the documentary or really actually read the book and then not feel like you know what happened because oh, yeah. we put all the evidence in there mm -hmm. and it's the only explanation that is supported in any way, shape, or form it's, uh, by evidence. Unlike some of the other and, theories, and Keefe D's there. name is in the book too. Because yeah, yeah. I don't want him to ride on Barnes yeah. and Noble too. Like. <laughs> I'm gonna scratch his name out my book. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to his library. I'm gonna kill it. <laughs> So, Greg, um, <laughs> getting down to the last questions, um, what did you find was the most compelling fact in the whole case that, that kind of blew you away? What was mm. the major thing that stood out to you? Well, one of the most important things that we had to really do a lot of due diligence on was the connection between Keefe D and Puffy Combs. Mm. <laughs> oh, well, uh, <laughs> you, didn't, you just threw that out there. What? Well, there was, you know, these... This this beef that was going on between Puffy and Suge had taken yeah. on a very serious nature after mm -hmm. Suge's bodyguard got killed in Atlanta by Puffy's bodyguard. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So once blood was on the ground, it was a real thing, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, um, Suge was actively hunting Puffy uh, down in L.A. and mm -hmm. he was accosting uh, people and beating people, trying to figure out where Puffy's people lived at out in L.A. His family. Oh. And so obviously, when Puffy's aware of that, he knows he's got a target on his back. He comes to Los Angeles. He's going to be you know, walking uh, down, looking over his shoulder all the time. So he then does essentially what Suge does, and he gets his own little entourage of Crips. Suge's got his bloods, and that's his kind of wow. homeboy security. Mm. And it was the incorporation of these Crips with these labels that really caused all, you know, okay. most of the bloodshed. It was it was a Crip that killed Tupac. It was a blood that killed Biggie. Wow. And it was these, blood asso these, these gang associations with these record labels and their record head, the label heads, Suge and Puffy, uh, that brought this all about. And so when Which, we... Which, um, by the way, Puffy totally denies any involvement. Of course. Just throw that I'm, in there. Like he's going to say it. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, so I know this is totally random. So you watch Empire, right? And Puffy, they're saying that it's sort of based on the music industry today. Do you watch Empire, first of all? I've watched a few episodes, yeah. Do you yeah. see any similarities? I know it's so random because it's such a... You know, but no, that, I mean the puffy. You see any Keefy D's alone? <laughs> <laughs> Leave this nigga alone. Got killed in the first episode. <laughs> hey, Keefy D here. He's, 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 he's deceased. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's deceased, right? Please. Oh, he's in jail right now. Oh, oh. Out. He's, he's, <laughs> but that'll be his people. About, are. I'll put some on his books. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Buy him a box of Newports. <laughs> okay, so um. He's, he, <laughs> He's actually a pretty interesting character. So. Yeah. Wow. Did okay. you interview him as well? Interviewed him uh, several times. Yeah. I, I interviewed him both uh, while I was on the job, and I interviewed him after I wrote the book wow. and explained to him that I was putting his name out there. Interrogated and when you interviewed, though. What uh, did he say about that? That's fucked up. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you spell my name right, though, yeah. please. It's K E E F Y <laughs> dash D. D. <laughs> So, I'll spray yeah. paint for you. Okay. So, so is this pretty much your life right now, is getting this out and, and getting the word out about? No, I, the book was written four years ago. I okay. helped on the documentary, but mm -hmm. you know, I do other things. I'm, oh, okay. I'm so what do you do? Retired. What do you do security now since you retired? <laughs> 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 security guard, oh, Taco Bell. You said you decompress. It took yeah. a year to decompress. So what, what, what interests you now? Besides, um, I'm I'm helping with some other writing projects. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, working on a, uh, um, a a series for Death Row Records. Wow, hilarious. Yeah. Okay. Are you working with um, what's his name? Michelle Stone. Uh, Savage. No, not with Lay. Now Lay, you know, of course, he just did the the NWA State Out of Compton thing. Right. And uh, I met with him, and we discussed my book because they were actually considering distributing it for me. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I. Um, I don't know what he's doing right now, but there's another production company that's trying to put together a uh, multi-series, or I'm sorry, a multi-part documentary on, on uh, Death Row. Mm. Yeah, I heard that they're mm. actually doing a movie on um, 
Which makes the sense. The story of Death Row. Yeah, it would yeah. make sense. It's the obvious. Yeah. And he, Lee yeah. is supposed to come on our show shortly. I think to that's an easier that. one to do than trying to do Tupac because trying to find, because that's the problem they're having now is trying to find someone who embraced the essence of Tupac. Mm. And it, you had to yeah. met him and been around him yeah. to know. And you can't just put anybody on camera and say, oh, that's Tupac. Because he has to have the sound. Mm -hmm. He's got to have that, that swag. He's got to have all that. And yeah, because I hate the character they have for Steve Jobs. <laughs> he looks nothing like him. But anyway, carry on. <laughs> well, that was a hell of a leap right there. <laughs> well, no, I see the importance of having a similar character. Well, well, let me ask version. you this. You saw the movie? No, but yeah. I'm going to. But I just... I'm but I, but I think with Pac because of his tone and his voice, like I know they had a couple guys right now that's reading for the character. It doesn't seem like it would hard, be hard to find somebody no. to do Pac. No, there's a lot of dudes look like him, but yeah. th that that tone in his voice is you know. And then I met you. I met thought him. the guy that was in the movie uh, Straight Out of Compton looked a lot like Pac. Yeah. But did he say? But he, he, he and did you see the movie? Even, that wasn't even his uh, voice. Yeah, Straight Out of Compton. I sure did. Oh, What'd you okay. think? That was really good. I was I was really entertained by it. I don't know how accurate it was mm. as far as the characters themselves, but uh, it was it was really entertaining. Yeah, even people that were there around that time, they're not mad at you know right. the story. I thought they so, did great. I, yeah, I love the movie. I, I saw it five, five times. Each time I act like I ain't never seen it before. Me I too. got I up and danced and cried, cried at the end. Every time <laughs> I cried, <laughs> I had to act like yes. I, had to like, I know I was, I was like, Is the sprinklers? Yeah, yeah, she cried on me. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, P? <laughs> because <laughs> I was there, I knew. Yeah, yeah. No, P, we, she, yeah. she knew. Was she like brought a forty a ounce in every time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ma'am, you can't pour that out in here. So okay, advice, is there anything? I, I will else? Do this. Advice for our listeners who brothers driving around. What advice do you give if if the police get behind? If you're driving you, while black, don't be fidgety, right? Don't yeah, you know, just as be best you can. Give the guy respect, okay. even if you don't respect him. Okay. Give him respect. Just, you know, it's in your best interest. Yeah. Mm. Answer I'm just trying the to questions. That's Go true. along with the program, because the, the more confrontational you get, the more you question their authority, you just create problems for yourself. Because, yeah. you know, we go, first thing we go is, why you pull us over? And you go, well, uh, you made a right when you're trying to make a left. Well, we actually have a show here at the <laughs> studio called uh, The Ride Along Radio Show. I don't know if you're familiar, but... They actually said on their last show last week that um, if a cop asks you to search your vehicle, you don't have to let them search. Yes, is, you don't. Is that true? That's your right. Uh, yeah, that's correct. You don't. Have yeah, to. So yeah, why do I they agree. do it anyway? Because uh, some people don't realize that they have the right to. Uh, so if someone says no, then what does the cop do? It depends on what other probable cause he has. If there's uh, something lying in plain sight, then based on that, he can search your car. There's other types of um, avenues that they can use to search your car, but if it's just simply, hey, I'd like to search your car, and they have nothing more than just an interest in searching, then they can't without mm. a warrant. Mm. So like smoke coming out of the window. Let me make right. On Poet's side. <laughs> on my side. I don't know what she do on that side you of the car. Search. <laughs> you can search this half. You search this half. <laughs> yeah. The driver's side is clean. Trust me. Shit on. So, um... We have uh, Greg brought some books, yes. right. and how we'd like to give those out is this that we'd mine. like our fans to eye. tweet that they listen to the show and hashtag Rollout Show. And do you have a particular hashtag for the book? Uh, I think it's just uh, hashtag Murder Rap. <laughs> so ha yeah, <laughs> hashtag good. Murder Rap, <laughs> hashtag Rollout, and we will choose a winner, a couple winners to give some of these books three, to. Yeah, yeah Greg, really this is. picture of you in the back, yeah, I'd have been a little scared. So tweet, our, twi <laughs> our Twitter is Rollout. You know, he seems cool as hell now, but I need to see Greg like, okay, I need you to step out the car. Yeah. <laughs> no, you you look like a All black guys know, as soon as you get out the car, it's a wrap. You don't get back yeah. in. They're like, well, can you get in the back of my car just for my safety? That's just what I do with the pit bull. <laughs> had a flashback. <laughs> 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 You get out of here. <laughs> wow, that's crazy probably, that that happened. He's probably nailing right now. Them niggas just snitching because I know, dude. <laughs> Call Kate. What's the nigga name? KVD. KVD. Call KVD. Them. Shut that nigga down. <laughs> so tweet rollout show at Twitter. Oh, hashtag yeah. rollout show and hashtag murder rap. And we'll pick. From those hashtags, the I still say the funniest the shit in the world. Is it, where, where you from? He said up north. Where you from? <laughs> Lake Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> we, we was all claiming, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 You're like, I'm I'm Lake Tahoe. I was about to say he from not Lake Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I should have said Oakland. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything else um, you would like to add or leave us with this afternoon? 
No, really, I just, uh, you, were, you know, my whole... What was your beef with R.J. Bond, first of all? What made you want to come on the show? What did he say that you wanted to counter? So let's, let's do that. Okay, the real, the, the motivation for me to kind of set the record straight is because I'm helping to represent those people that are being falsely accused. You know, there's several people that he's putting out there as murderers that are demonstrably innocent. And these people have husbands and wives and families and kids, and their reputations are being smeared based on absolutely no evidence. His whole entire theory is based on this individual. He's a don't show his picture out here. Well, this is a schizo- <laughs> no, <laughs> this is a schizophrenic child molester. Oh, oh wow! Oh. And this is a letter he wrote. That everything that R.J. Bond based his theory on is that the letter that says uh, "Half Dead" was just, that little oh, half that. dead was, <laughs> okay. and it's uh, it's uh, it's. Uh, listen, yeah, R.J. Bond's like theories have always been more <laughs> like, pre- like, like he got a white van yeah. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the actual author of this letter was a 14 year old girl that he was molesting. Whoa. Oh my God! And uh, you know we've interviewed her, we've interviewed his whole family, and this whole thing is so incredibly ridiculous i mean it's nothing more than oh he was trying to get from up under whatever charges he had and that's what he talked about no 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 this guy he this was written back in 1998 this guy went to prison in 2001 wow and uh so this letter circle this sat in a uh a reporter's desk for what 17 years a guy named chris blatchford from Mm -hmm. fox news Mm. Uh had this letter that he had given him this guy had given him the letter, mm-hmm. and it sat in the desk for years until 2013 when uh, the reporter gives it to Russell Poole and goes, here, this thing's been sitting around my desk for 13, 14 years. Check it out. But what Chris Blatchford didn't do, he never told Russ Poole who was behind the letter. He just mm. said, I had an informant. Oh. Mm. Because he knew if we ever figured out who was actually behind it, the whole thing would go up in smoke. Once you find out that it's a schizophrenic child molester that's behind this whole thing, the theory kind of falls apart. Yeah, fuck him. So these people that um, <laughs> that you're saying that R.G. Bond is um, smearing, can't they sue for slander or that's, libel? That's part of my involvement here is there's, uh, they're considering legal action for defamation and for slander. And there's a whole group of them, two brothers, Malcolm and Danny Patton, Sharitha Knight, Reggie Wright Jr., and, of course, Little Half Dead. Mm-hmm. Everybody's really pissed off. Um, that he's not being held accountable for putting this stuff out there with nothing more than the imagination of a crazy man. Mm. And too, you have to remember, too, Pete, when <clears throat> someone says lawsuit, lawyers got to get paid. It's some of them that will do it pro bono, but most of them go, no, I need to get whatever you're going to yeah. give me. I don't know what's going to happen on the end of this. So it's hard to go, well, I'm going to get a lawyer and I'm going to sue. And so you got to kind of play it out like, I don't know. Anybody want to help me out? That's you, right. That's the <laughs> biggest real? point right there is that these people know that it, t- it takes money. It's, yeah. it's throwing good money after bad because R.J. Bond and uh, the other author, they don't have, you know, they're, right. they're bankrupt. They don't have any money. Mm. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you asked, he told. No, it's all good. Anything else you'd like to add before Broke we wrap up? No, I really appreciate being on the show. It's no, been a lot thanks. of fun. And one of you escort me to my car. He has more of a non threatening look. <laughs> He'd be like, fuck you, I'm fucking you. Open the gate! <laughs> it's a pit bull! <laughs> that was funny. Oh, as but thanks a lot. <laughs> no, and we'll, we'll go ahead. Fuck it, it. Yeah, I like this right thanks now. Thanks for uh, joining us. Yeah, and we it, look forward to and seeing the documentary. Thank you. We'll give away a book. Much appreciate it. Yeah. Don't forget to tweet Rollout Show with the hashtag Murder Rap and Rollout Show.